Hello, everyone. Uh, I think we've had some good uh, discussions so far, and I'm going to sort of carry on the discussion for industrial equipment. And uh, a couple of these guys at the front here were talking about ICS and some of that. And talk about actually what Device Authority have done in a couple of use cases towards the end of the deck to give you some real life examples of how you can apply security to industrial settings. Uh, just before we get into some of that, though, it would be interesting just to talk about some of those business challenges. So if you look at you know, the number of um, companies out there, and typically what happens is these companies go through this sort of selection and say, hey, well, why do I really need to apply security? What are the real challenges in that, those environments? And this slide here is really just putting out some of those challenges. So obviously the key things in there are things like operator injury, fatality, um, you know, in industrial settings, you might have PLCs connected to large machines, or it could be industrial equipment and so forth. And the last thing you want is to have that machine tampered with and cause an explosion, for example. Um, equally, things like sensitive data theft, a revenue protection, IP, um, IP um, leakage, and process information which is stolen about your components and production line is really, really key. Uh, in fact, I've got a slide on that and a few slides time to talk about how you might sort of approach protecting that uh, sensitive IP. Um, a couple of the guys here were talking about OT challenges, and we see that as a quite a fundamental challenge in um, ICS as well as the Internet of Things, really, is how does the OT meet the IT is one of the key fundamental challenges. Um, because they're fundamentally different, right? IT is very different to OT um, in the nature of what they do. Um, disruption of manufacturing operations. The last thing a, a product line manager or a guy running a production facility wants is their production to come down for any amount of time as it costs huge sums of money. Um, so again, they have to think about that when you're delivering security in those environments. Brand damage reputation, of course, if your line goes down and you, you, you get a massive splash on the news about your particular uh, uh, event, then that's uh, not a good thing. And the last thing is around compliance and financial liability. Now, there's a whole raft of regulatory compliance and requirements for industrial settings uh, that are going to come. And also things like GDPR, if you, you know, IT-based uh, implementations or OT meeting IT, equally inside the industrial setting, maybe you've got personal devices that are connected into your IT infrastructure. How do you protect those people's sensitive data in that scenario? Um, so there's just a few things there to think about, uh, what certainly some of our customers think about when they're talking about OT-type environments and industrial settings. Um, this slide, actually, uh, I took some of this data from Kapersky Labs, which is industrial um, control systems type um, details. And on the left-hand side here, you can see we've got a number of vulnerabilities. In 2017, there's 322, and 2018, 415. And so the picture here is that the number of vulnerabilities that are coming out is growing between those two years, 30%. Um, and the more interesting thing for me, if you look on the right-hand side, is where those types of vulnerabilities are found and what types of equipment they're found in. So things like, uh, you know, PLCs, I think it was a mention of PLCs, um, data concentrators, a whole bunch of equipment inside the likes of critical manufacturing facilities. So anything that does transport, electrical equipment, uh, any of those critical type manufacturing deployments. And then the second one there you can see is energy. That's uh, a bit worrying for me. Um, you know, you've got energy type deployments and to have those number of vulnerabilities in there is a bit worrying. Um, and also, you know, you think about these types of the, um, products that are installed in these environments. Not all of them are internet connected, um, but there is a trend to go and connect them up because there is significant value attached to them. You know, for these production facilities, it's all about, uh, hey, how can I improve the yield of my production floor? How do I monitor the production floor? And so forth, to give them, well, cost savings is one avenue as well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting slide there to talk about. But then I pulled this from Anisa, uh, which was released last year. And this is a guide, a good practice guide they produced for security of the Internet of Things, um, for smart manufacturing. And there's a whole raft of guidelines in there from how do you do secure updates, how do you man manage what you should do to protect your cloud security, um, and so forth. And I've pulled this section out here, 4.4.1, which is all about trust and integrity for management security measures. 
Um, and you, know, you look at number TNMO2, authorize all IoT devices within the IoT network to use appropriate methods. Uh, digital certificates, PKI, as an example of that. Or TMO3, define data exchange channels between IoT devices to form a whitelist. And to use only secure channels whenever possible. And the list goes on, right? There's loads of these uh, guidelines about what you should employ. Uh, and I'll give you an example of that in a bit about how and why one of our customers decided they need to deploy something like this, i.e. digital certificates and PKI, uh, in a bit. Um, if you step back a little bit, you think about, well, why is IoT different to um, IT? IT's been around for so long now, I mean, in years. And the problem which we see in the IT space is it's a very human-centric identity model. It's all about the user as an as authentication, right? It's all about username and password. Maybe it's a biometric. Uh, second factor auth, maybe, is thrown in there as well. Um, but it's very, very different to IoT-type devices because typically IoT devices, even if they're in an industrial setting, you don't, you, know, you don't have an ability to log in using the username and password. And you know, the typical scale of these type of deployments means this is a much larger type of volume than an IT environment. So you need to have a device-centric identity model to be able to trust the devices that connect into your operations and services and automate that. And that's where you need to have that how do you manage trust at scale is really important in these types of settings. Um, so we, we've actually been along a journey um, for the last two or three years talking about IoT, been involved with various groups, including the IT Security Foundation. And this is a model which we've um, been talking about for some time. It's about that device journey from um, its inception. And there's a number of steps here, right? There's a one top left-hand side, it goes to two, three, four, then there's five and six in the middle. And I'll talk you through the steps here. So it's all about, initially, how do you trust those devices before they you know, come out your production facility and trust the supply chain they're being built in? Then your product might go through to distribute a reseller, and they might go to the owner, at which point the owner plugs it in, powers it on, and it uh, tries to onboard. And that's one of the fundamental initial steps for an IT device is how does it phone home how is it trusted to connect to your operations and services? And then beyond that, so I can trust the device, how do I then you know, connect it to my IT application and protect the IT application? So things like maybe the Azure stack, maybe you've got your own IT platform application, AWS IT, whatever it may be, how do I automate the provisioning of those um, devices into that platform? And the third is how do I manage the security to that platform? And a lot of these platforms have different ways to do that from uh, you know, an identity point of view. How do you provision a certificate to the edge device and into the IoT platform is one example. Or how do I give it a crypto key? Um, how do I manage the life cycle of those keys and manage things like certificate expiry? Um, if I've got a certificate expiry of, say, you know, a year and I've got 10,000 devices, how do I manage the automation of updating those certificates? And then number four there is how do I plug back into the enterprise space? You know, typically, you know, Lots of customers come from the enterprise outwards, and then this new world of I IoT is, well, how do I connect the dots? How do I plug into the enterprise to use my things like my certificate authorities or hardware security modules? Okay, I've got these things, but what do I do with them? And the last two pieces there, five and six, is really, you think about the end of life of products in IoT. What, you know, what do you do with your IoT device? Do you just leave it, just put it in the bin? Or do I gracefully decommission it? So revoke certificate status um, and so forth. But equally, if you've got a lease model on your products, you might want to recommission it to another IoT platform or other owner. So they need to transfer the ownership, i.e. change the keys out for a new owner. And so you can see there's this life cycle and journey for these type of IoT devices. Um, so this slide here, I, I tend to call this OT meets IT. And, and you can see why. We've got OT on the left-hand side, and you've got enterprise on the right-hand side, so your typical, typical IT. Uh, and then you've got those steps again, which I'll show you in the last slide. So one, two, three, and four along the sort of top, top side there. And you've got, effectively, these key pieces. So you've got your robot, or it could be boiler inside your manufacturing facility. You've got your data center, which could typically be on-prem. 
uh, and your chosen IoT platform on-prem, so it could be in Azure, IT, Stack, AWS IT, whatever it may be. And then your trusted enterprise applications on the right-hand side, so I've already got my harbor security modules, and I want to use those harbor security modules for storing my root keys. But how do I manage the provisioning of those keys or certificates to those edge devices and it also into my IT application without touching them? So this is what we're looking at here, is the OT part that meets IT. It's all about how do I trust the device, securely onboard the device to services, and that's really where the rubber hits the ground. I've said this device is trustworthy. What do I need to give it now to connect to my IoT application? Is it a certificate, a token? Do I need to do end-to-end -end crypto, and so forth? And we'd like to see that you need to have an IoT IM platform, um, which is what our product is actually, to manage the glue. It's basically the glue to pull these pieces together so you can operationalize that at scale. It's one of the fundamental challenges. And actually, this is a blueprint we've done. You can see it's in 2.0. Um, guys, and you can have a read that on our website if you want to. So this is a, an example use case with a, a manufacturer we work with. There's three zones here. We've got the factory production zone on the right-hand side, the um, another zone, second zone in the middle there, then a less secure zone, but still secure, uh, zone one. And so you have all your production facilities, like things like CNC milling machines, CNC lathes. Uh, water cutter machines and so forth. And they generally tend to communicate over what's called OPC UA inside factories. It's a, it's a standardized um, communications protocol and standard effectively. Um, and actually this customer went through an audit and out of the orbit, audit basically came a set of recommendations that they must employ a scheme to authenticate uh, the machines inside the factory because to date they didn't have any form of security in there or any way to authenticate machines at all. In fact, the APC8 standard has three options. It has no security, it has sign and sign and encrypt. And so through that audit, they had to go for sign and encrypt. But the problem they were having is, okay, they've got lots of machines in this factory. How do I manage the certificates to those machines? And how do I authorize those machines through using certificates into my back-end IoT platform? and connect the dots to my chosen um, HSM vendor that I have on-prem. And so in this instance, we're using our Keyscaler platform to manage that automation of certificates to that gateway inside Factory Zone 2, which ultimately those machines then authenticate against. And then all the way back into the IT platform to provision the certificates into there. And then the lifecycle management of those certificates on an ongoing basis. So you can then take a device offline if you want to, revert the certificate status of an individual machine and so forth. So this is all about uh, regulation, adherence, uh, audit, um, and basically provide a better security practice and posture inside that factory environment. This next one here actually is quite an interesting one, and you can roll this across, including the last one, across a whole ream of different applications. It could be medical, it could be industrial. In fact, this one's about smart machining. So on the left-hand side, you've got production zone effectively, and then the right hand side you've got this zone two environment. So you, in this scenario, basically what we're trying to achieve is to protect that revenue leakage. So prevent somebody managed to steal that really sensitive design, preventing somebody you know, copying that design and basically undercutting you because they've got your information. And the way we're doing this here is actually the customer's providing a file, or with either an opera, a component to machine, um, to this application on the right-hand side. And, and then step two is that application is authenticated to our Keyscaler platform. And then we're effectively creating a key, standardized crypto key, which that file then is uh, encrypted to. Um, and then the machines will carry on doing their component machining. When it's finished its job, it will connect to that IoT platform and get its next job. And then when it gets that job, it goes, okay, well, I need to decrypt that file. So then it goes off to Keyscaler through step six and seven, authenticates. And actually, with our technology, you can then use our key derivation technology to derive the same key. So then what we're doing is binding the identity of that model to that machine. See, so you've got a, effectively uh, an irrefutable evidence trail to say, hey, yeah, this is the machine that basically um, has the right cryptographic proof to unlock that model. And it also has the uh, ability to machine that component. So it gives that assurance, 
gives that um, protection against that industrial espionage and somebody trying to steal your sensitive designs. Uh, this is another one quickly. So it's all about data privacy inside that smart factory. So again, you can have your machine on the left-hand side. But in this example, we might be using something like an Azure cloud. And we're encrypting the end-to-end -end data flows against policy into a back-end infrastructure so that when it goes into your application, it's still encrypted at rest. And then you can allow, through authorized key requesters or applications, the ability to then decrypt that data on demand. So there's a way to elevate that security posture beyond just the standard TLS tunnel or VPN to your back-end cloud infrastructure and to give those access rights to various um, administrators inside the organization rather than just willy-nilly releasing that data to, to various people. And this also applies very, very heavily to things like medical equipment or um, you know, healthcare type products if you want to meet compliance like perhaps GDPR or HIPAA in the US. And I think this is one of the final ones. This one's all about an industrial connected oil production. So this is a very large company in the US whereby they have refinery equipment and they want to be able to onboard and automate the process of delivering certificates to all of their real estate of uh, oil refinery equipment into an Azure IoT stack. And so effectively what we're doing here is managing the process for enrollment into the DPS from Azure and the provision of credentials and certificates to those edit devices and into the IoT hub. So that these devices, you don't have to touch every one. It's an automated approach and also to then manage the life cycle of those certificates and keys. Uh, and the second point there is to a lot of these devices, they want to make sure that that sensitive data goes into the backing infrastructure and is still encrypted at rest. Um, that slide didn't come out very well. Um, but basically, device authority, so we are all about an identity access management platform for IoT, um, all about data trust, device trust, and operationalizing that trust. And if you want to come and have a chat, I'm outside, or you can contact me with these. Thank you.